So, you've been wanting to become a hacker because you're lonely and autistic, and the only way you can gain power or influence in the world is through a computer and a keyboard. Worry not, my friend. You've come to the right place. You don't have to live vicariously through Elliot Alderson, and I'll teach you how to actually hack the FBI. You need to learn, learn, learn hacking. hacking. But nah, in all seriousness, becoming a hacker was something I always wanted to do, but I always procrastinated around doing it, and I wasted so much time learning stuff that was was completely relevant to me at the time. I thought I would need to learn everything from programming to scripting and everything inside out. And I have a bachelor's degree in computer science and a master's, and I still wouldn't call myself really a pro hacker or anything like that. It's only since the past one or two years that I've actually learned the things that I need in order to achieve that vision. It was only since the past year or two I've been managed to find things that would actually help me achieve that vision instead of just going to, you know, like random college classes and thinking that would help me, which it does in some way, but it isn't specific knowledge. You do not need a computer science degree, you do not need a cybersecurity master's. And you do not need any certifications like SEC plus or EJPT, whatever this, the thing what you need is hands-on experience. You do not need a computer science degree. You do not need a master's degree. And you sure as hell don't need all of these certifications that all of these cybersecurity influencers are telling you like SEC plus CompTIA, SEC plus CompTIA A plus, like shut up, man. Honestly, you have no clue what you're, what you're saying or what you're doing. While a computer science degree or a certification like CompTIA, that will put you ahead against other people, but that will only give you knowledge. And knowledge that isn't applied is useless. Let me repeat that one more time. Knowledge that isn't applied is absolutely useless. So what, what do I mean by this? What exactly do I mean by this? So let's say you're writing a program and you want to construct a for loop, uh, would you go ahead and re uh, take open a book and go ahead and read that? Or would you go about like actually writing the for loop and actually running the program? Like what do you think gives you the most kind of educational value or the, the ones that would actually help you become a good hacker uh, or, or a good programmer, sorry. Like, would you say reading it gives you more knowledge? Would you say actually implementing the program and actually coding it yourself and then running it and then debugging to see if there's any errors? Which do you think logically would make you a better programmer? Obviously it's going to be the ones in which uh, you sit down and you run the program and you write yourself. That is the best way to learn something is to do it by hand. So the key takeaway here is having hands-on experience. That's what you need. You do not need to read 50 books a day uh, on how to hack or anything like that. You need to actually get experience into how to, how to do it yourself. And that comes through practical exercises such as, you know, if you're a programmer, you code. If you're a hacker, what do you do? You hack. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we now need to ask ourselves, what is the best way of gaining experience to become a hacker? Well, first you need to know what exactly a hacker is. A hacker is a person skilled in information technology who achieves goals by non-standard means. The term has become associated in popular culture with the security hacker, someone with knowledge of bugs or exploits to break into computer systems and access data which would otherwise be inaccessible to them. Okay, so we can extrapolate some information from this. So a hacker is someone who's skilled in information technology. A hacker is someone who exploits things in order to gain unprivileged access to other things. So what's the best way to go ahead doing this? What's the best way to practice? And as a beginner, I would recommend you go on platforms in which this sort of whole hacking thing is either gamified or it's simulated. So stuff like Hack the Box, where it's it's basically you get uh, you you have a bunch of challenges and you have to solve them, and they gamify it in a way by adding points to whatever challenge that's on the board. So you gain a hundred points for solving an easy challenge, and then as it gets progressively harder, you get more and more points. 
and you're ranked on the leaderboard against other players, much like a multiplayer game. So it makes it a lot more fun and it makes it a lot more rewarding and more engaging. And if you're a complete beginner, I would recommend just going on Try Hack Me. Hack the box might be a bit too difficult for beginners to go on. But when you go on Try Hack Me, they sort of give you a simulated kind of guided walkthrough of how to gain access and things like that. So it'll be very handy to start off from places like Try Hack Me, then work your way up to Hack the Box and etc. Just keep on growing and expanding. The thing that I love about these labs is you're practicing in a simulated environment instead of just reading some whatever like certification study material, which is just absolutely deplorable. That doesn't really help you out that much in terms of like actually hacking or actually doing stuff that requires practical stuff. You can't do that with just reading a book. But once you've made an account on these platforms, you want to go ahead and you want to start practicing straight away. Uh, get some solves on some machines, uh, go through go through some boxes, go through some uh, guide, uh, guided kind of walkthroughs as well. Uh, re read about other people's solves, read about other people's kind of guides or walkthroughs. That That's how you learn something is through uh, through doing it yourself and through learning how other people around you do it as well. You do not learn in a, like just reading one book, one page at a time. That's not how, how you learn this. One thing I would recommend to beginners is to try out every single category on the kind of list. So that can be anywhere from, you know, reverse engineering or forensics or web. Web, web is probably the most common, but dip your toes into each, each one of the categories and find which one you like. And once you find which one you like, you then go ahead and you try to become the master of that one thing. The reason why, why I'm saying to just, you know, pick one thing after you've picked everything else is because I think it's personally just much better to, to be, be a master at one thing than be kind of good at everything is you only have a limited amount of time anyway to, to learn all of these things. And even if you do get sick of one, one category because you've been focusing it on for so long, you would have like, like you would have almost a better kind of knowledge than if you were to just go uh, like, oh, I'm just gonna learn everything at the same time. Because these things kind of require focused, like I'm, I'm just thinking about this thing right now, that sort of level of attention. Um, and it's not good to divert your attention to do, do loads of stuff. So that's why I recommend only sticking to one category at a time. So once you've found your category and you want to, you're sort of happy kind of going into it, what you want to do is you want to practice at least, at least three times a week. If not more, you should probably do it every day if you're serious about it. But at, at least three times a week, you really need that exposure sort of hands down um it, it, even if like you know you're pulling your hair out and you don't know what's going on you need you, you kind of need that sort of like aimlessness at the beginning anyway don't be like me and procrastinate until you finish your degree get into it as soon as possible you really need that hands-on experience and you need to be exposed to it constantly if you want to be good at what you do this is something that i wish my younger self knew at the time but again i was kind of procrastinating so much uh over over this so now that you've tried everything and you know which category you're in you need some hacker friends like me so join my discord server with the link in the description but now nah, you don't only have to join my discord server or my community you can go ahead and you can search up whichever kind of hacker space you want to get into and you'll typically find this at capture the flag events where you're going ahead and you're playing CTFs, which is basically hacking, but gamified. And you'll find loads of people there just like you. And you need to start kind of involving yourself with them and talking with them and speaking with them. Always surround yourself with people who are more talented or more skilled or more knowledgeable than you are, because that's the only way you get better. If you're the smartest person in the room, then, you know, you're in the wrong room. I know it's a cliche saying, but it's so true. And also like this idea that hacking is some like 
you know, loner coder kind of, you know, I, I, I do everything by myself. Like that's completely false. You need to involve yourself with other people just like you because that's what gets you to improve and that's what pushes you to be better because you're comparing yourself to, you know, uh, everyone around you and everyone on the leaderboard. Um, you know, like, like there's a saying that, oh, don't compare yourself to other people. No, you should absolutely compare yourself to other people. That's, that's the only way you get good. You know, uh, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be there if it wasn't useful. So utilize it to your best degree. So in terms of practicing CTF events, as I mentioned, you want to go ahead and there's a couple of platforms, I guess you could find CTFs. You, you could find CTFs in your local city or hometown or in your country if you want to travel um, outside your house. Uh, there, there's in-person CTFs and there's online CTFs. So, you know, I, ideally if there's an in-person CTF around your, around your area, you want to go ahead and you want to go there and play it with other people. But however, uh, most CTFs are online and I think it's a much easier way to gain exposure rather than traveling all the way around the place. So uh, to find CTFs, you want to go to a website called ctftime.org or I forget the URL, I'll leave it in the description anyway. But essentially over there, like you'll find a bunch of CTFs to play and you know you can go ahead and you can meet other people with their annual gain hacking experience with other people so it may make you learn so much more faster when you're surrounded by other people and you're in a competitive environment and you know your testosterone uh is is kind of like kicked up like that 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 stuff will help you become a better uh ctf player in general but that's all i pretty much have this video i'm just going to summarize the points really quickly mentioned in this video so number one would be get started now. Do not procrastinate watching videos about hacking and do not procrastinate watching like C++ tutorials. That's not gonna teach you how to hack. You need to get started right now doing those practical examples, either through a try hack me or hack the box or CTFs. You need to start playing those and actually doing it yourself in order to gain experience. So number two is then once you've kind of gained a small bit of experience, or you can just start this right away, but it's to get in contact with other people who have the same kind of interest in you, which is hacking. That's, and you know, ideally you wanna have these people be more talented than you. So you can kind of leech off of them and get, get more knowledge and experience or whatever, but but also contribute by being nice back. You know, every, everyone likes a likable person. So you, you, you go ahead and you find those types of people and just be surrounded by it. Uh, day in and day out. So the last summarized point I have for you is to keep on regularly practicing this over and over again. You want to practice at least three times a week and then work yourself up to doing it daily because you need that kind of time just spent like thinking or solving challenges. This does not come overnight. Uh, it doesn't matter how high you know your IQ is, although IQ would help a bit. But if you haven't got the experience and you you haven't got the kind of like staying in the trenches that kind of thing you, you're not going to uh, be good or capable or anything like this in terms of solving ctf challenges so it's a constant kind of uh video game almost it's exactly like a video game you keep you start at the lower levels at the you know you struggle to beat the first few bosses and then once you gain more and more experience and you can then beat the bigger bosses, the better bosses. And then the smaller bosses look easy as hell to you. And you keep on repeating that up, uh, over and over again until you die. And that's all I have for you. Bye.